My guest today is Wilfred Machafo. Wilfred, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, David. How are you? I'm doing very well, considering these crazy times that we live in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Tell me, what do you do? Well, as of right now, I am doing my internship at Microsoft right now. Which department? Yeah. Which uh, team? Well, I'm actually working on a team uh, called the TNT program, which is the new technology program as of right now. It's sort of an explore program where you get a chance to, you know, discover some uh, program, man the program management side of mm. a tech company and also the software engineer side of a tech company. So yeah. I'm not, uh, not familiar with that program. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty new program. I think it has been, um, like Microsoft started that for about like six years ago. Okay. So, yeah. It's about when I about when I started working here. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Now you we were talking earlier, that, but that you um you didn't have a straight path to this career. You didn't uh, just go to college, get a computer science degree, get the internship, uh, start working. You your your path was was less this and more yeah. this, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, tell me a little about your journey to where you are now. Yeah, of course, David. You know, David, um, most of people see diversity um, as a gender and skin color. And as a black man, I know that's important, you know. But in fact, there's another aspect of diversity that is usually forgotten, which is the people's background. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. David, um, that was my case. Um, Unlike most people in tech company, I did not have a traditional background um, of going four years um, of coming of college and applying for a job. Um, a few years ago, I barely knew English. Mm -hmm. uh, what's what's your uh, native language? Uh, my native language is French, actually. Okay. Yeah. So I came here about um, four years ago. So a few years from, ago. From France. I, I, yeah, I was in France before, but I grew up in Cameroon. Okay. Before coming here, so is yeah. A, I, I've never been to Cameroon. Is that is that a French-speaking country? Yeah, it's a French-speaking country in Africa. It's like West Africa. It's okay. pretty close to um, Nigeria. Okay, there's a lot of Nigerians in Chicago. Uh, yeah. Maybe a lot of Cameroons, Cameroonians as well, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm like yeah, I I don't know about um, Chicago, so I've never been there. Okay. So yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, I was homeless, and now, um, you know, I'm about to completing my first internship at Microsoft. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> what? what uh, you were homeless in uh, in the U.S. or in France yeah. or in Cameroon? In the, in the U.S. In the U.S. Uh, what led to that? Uh, so well, basically, what happened is that you know, as I I came here actually um, in America with. Um, to learn English. I had mm -hmm. no intent of learning computer science or anything like that. Okay. I did not even know about it, actually. So I left behind me my mother and father and brothers. So I came here um, pretty much alone. I had like my little brother here. And, you know, I started learning English. And learning English wasn't fun at all. I'm going to be honest. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was very hard for me to um, to to connect with people. I realized mm -hmm. how language, um, it's very important for people when I got here in the US. Um, you know, by, um, my journey about it was, I went to school, I took like, you know, three months of English classes where I was learning like, you know, the basic English, like the alphabet, but it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't helpful because I still couldn't speak with people, even right. though I was learning stuff, right? So um, I started watching TV and going on something called talk time. So um, basically talk time is like um, you go to someone place, to someone else's place and you start talking to him. Like most of the people who are actually doing that are, you know, um, older people who are retired. 
so they open the door for international students so they can learn English. Yeah, that is pretty. Um, that is what I did when I got here. Um, that had to be more helpful than watching TV, I would think. Definitely, definitely, it was very helpful because, like you know, you get a chance to talk to people and understand what they are saying instead of just hearing on the TV. But you can actually also ask questions, right? So it was. It was great. I loved it. At the beginning, it was scary, but you know, <laughs> um, I realized the more you know familiar you became with that person, the more easy it's for you to ask questions and also try try to learn English. So yeah, that's actually how I started learning English. But um, six months after being in this country, I lost the financial support of my family. Like I said earlier, I, I came here as an international student and usually international students are not allowed to work. Um, so I did not know that. Yeah, <laughs> so that's actually how I, I lost my apartment and I stopped going to school. Mm. So yeah, and I was homeless for about a year, actually. Oh. I was living where, in the, where were you? What city? Oh, uh, in Seattle. I yeah, always okay. live in Seattle. Yeah. And they were what? Were you sleeping in the parks, or did you find a shelter to stay at, or what? Um, at the beginning, I did not know about shelter. Shelter, or you know, I was literally sleeping on the street, like by the bus, by the bus, the uh, bus okay, station. Okay. So yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. It was pretty hard, and sure. I felt um, heartbroken and alone. But I knew that you know, um, I was in a country of opportunity. I did not know at that time still that what I wanted to do, but I knew that I was uh, pretty much kind of better than other people in the sense that I was living in, you know, I was still in America and I had a hope, right? Um, it was actually like, like I said, like I grew up in Cameroon and over there being homeless is worst, right? Really? I think. I didn't so, know that either. <laughs> yeah. So that's actually why I. I was, I, I mean, like I still, I stayed here, mm-hmm. and I was sleeping on the on the on the street, and I had, a, I mean, like before being homeless, I had like, you know, I used to go to the gym, like everyone here. Uh, I had so basically, I had a uh, my gym membership. I still had it. I don't know how. I was very lucky, but yeah. it was working. It was still working. So basically, I was taking a shower there. Good deal. Yeah. So. Um, um, after being homeless for like about like I think like seven months, I applied for um, to have my to ask for uh, the work permit. So basically, so like I can be able to work outside of school, or I can be able to work in the U.S. Um, I applied for that, and it took me about I think four months to get that. So while being homeless, um, I got my 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 working permit. I started working um, in a fast food place um, by Bellevue, in Bellevue in a fast food place. So when I started working there, um, I was working in the kitchen. I remember working in the kitchen and also working with a lot of other immigrants and, you know, they were speaking Spanish. But for Mm -hmm. me, I was like, okay, so I kind of learned a little bit of Spanish there. So, but I wanted to learn English. I still, like, I had been, at that point, I had been in this country for less than a year. So my English wasn't perfect. And I was still trying to learn English. And I felt like I couldn't learn much English being by being in that um, position. So what I did was I saved, I, mean, I put in my mind, like, I had to save um, some money so I can, you know, buy my car and drive for Lyft and Uber um, so I can talk to people, I can interact with people and I can practice my English. So uh, I I stayed there for about um, a year. I saved some money and, you know, during that time I got some, I got my own place where I was living and I saved money, I bought my car and I started driving for Lyft. Um, after like, um, after six months driving for Lyft, I returned to school. Um, I returned to school just to keep learning English, just to keep learning English. And, but you know, while I was driving for Lyft, I met a lot of 
you know, a lot of people who actually helped me um, learn English. I remember, I remember the first day of working there, um, of, of starting driving for Lyft. I pick up this uh, lady and she started grinning me. She was like, hey, how are you? And I was like, on my wheels, I was like, good. I did not want to talk because, <laughs> you know, I was still afraid of speaking English at that time. Mm -hmm. And she realized that and she goes like, well, why don't you talk to me? And like, <laughs> I tell, I just tell her that, you know, I, I was like, I just tried to tell her that I couldn't speak English. But she told me that, well, you know, you have to learn um, to be comfortable in a discomfort position. That's true. And like that sentence, only that sentence kind of gave me more hope in my life. Being comfort, you know, being comfortable in a discomfort position. Right. So, um, and she told me that, well, I know for sure you don't know how to speak English, but, you know, you don't know how to very, I mean, speak English very good, but you can try and it's okay. You know, you're not, you, you will never, you might never going to be you know, the best in English, but it's good to try. It's good to push yourself. So since that day, I started speaking English. Of course, I met other people who, you know, um, laugh at me, laugh at my English, but I also met a lot of people who support me, you know. Yeah. Um, I met a lot of people who were like, that's good, keep going. And they actually also helped me with, you know, finding some books, some other books to learn. English. And through the same journey of driving for Uber, I met a lot of software engineers. So most of them, uh, most of them start talking to me about software engineering. And I was like, what is that? So because <laughs> yeah, I like, you know, in Cameroon, like where I'm coming from, um, we don't have the lecture to, you know, to have a lot of software engineer. Uh, so I did not know about it. I had never heard about it at that time. So until I drive for Lyft and I was like, what is that? So they kind of explained me what it was being a software engineer. And I didn't know, like, I was like, okay, well, uh, I'm going to look into it because um, one goal that I have in my life, it's to become successful so I can help other people. Because in my mind, I was like, I'm always like, where I am right now, I'm pretty sure I am odd, odd, I mean, I'm better than other people. And I know for sure by being in this position, it's to it's to also help other people, you know. So my life, I'm trying, I'm just trying to be successful so I can help other people who didn't have a, who didn't have the chance to to be where I am, right? So and so as soon as I hear about software engineering, I ask to myself, is that is that path can help me, you know, help other people, you know, be in the light for other people. So, and I found out that um, it can actually do that. And what interests me the most of software engineering was the ability to make other things, like, you know, the ability to, to realize stuff that you always, that you only think about, you know, you can actually put that in the computer and try. So I started working, I started um, um, learning um, software engineering um, in, in some of my code in like in online. So mm. I, I started learning online. And uh, where, did, where did you go? Do you remember the sites? Uh, so I know this one that I learned uh, on, I don't know if you've heard about Udacy. Oh yeah, uh, spell it. Udacy, U, so U, D, A, C, Y. So okay. it's from old, it's probably like an old website. So that's actually where I first learned, you know, how to code. Uh, and, you know, it was pretty, when I started, when I started that, when I started there, um, I did not know, like, you know, like it was the basic stuff. And again, I was, I was still going to school for uh, my English. So at school, I started taking some information about software engineering. Um, I took some classes of software engineering at school. I remember, I, uh, you know, it was kind of hard for me to tackle all of that, you know, but, you know, I was making, I was making a lot of effort to learn how 
um, you know, how to code. Yeah. Were you and, working toward a degree? Uh, yeah, I was working toward a degree. I was working to have like, you know, an associate degree in, in computer science okay. uh, at the time. So, and my hope was, you know, to go, you know, to, to go, um, to go for four years and got my bachelor at that time. So um, I went to school. When going to school, I was still driving for Lyft um, as a, you know, as a full time. Like Lyft was my Uber and Lyft was my full time work. So I, still, I was still working for, I was still driving for them. And I met so much other software engineering and, oh, you know, yeah. In Bellevue, yes. there's, uh, there's almost nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely true. That is true. They, I, you know, Seattle and Bellevue, uh, like you know, became like a tech city. So like, no matter where you go, you will see them, right? And it was always fascinating for me to see how you know how there were so many people who were willing to help. You know, so uh, it was good. I want to I share with you a story that you just reminded me of. I was once in. Uh, it was either Bellevue or Redmond or Kirkland, somewhere around there. And uh -huh. I was in an Uber with my friend Jerry. And the driver of the Uber recognized Jerry from his Channel 9. Oh, wow. Tech video. <laughs> so he looked in the rear here, aren't you on Channel 9? I thought he was talking about me. Uh -huh. He was actually talking to Jerry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's how that's how pervasive the tech scene is in that part of the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like, you know, that happened all the time here in Seattle. Like me as a, as a driver, I, I met a lot of other people that I, you know, drove before because they come out of, you know, from out of state and, you know, you, you get a chance to meet them when you're a driver. So, yeah, um, you know, like one day I remember one day I was driving for um, for Lyft and I was about to head back home because I had some homework to do and I I was honestly also <laughs> kind of hungry. I was about like that was my and that was my end day, the end of my day. So I was clicking. I clicked on, you know, to shut down my application and I was as I was clicking there, I received another request from another client. So I click on accepted a request by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like very, um, I was pretty upset at that time because I was like, oh my gosh, it's, it was around 3 p.m. and like the whole day I didn't eat and <laughs> I had to do my, you know, I had to do my homework. But, you know, as I was like, as I was like okay, I, I already, I already um, accepted a request. So I went to her, uh, it was a lady, like a wonderful lady. I went to her, I picked her up. And when I picked her up, I told her that, you know, I might be pretty quiet because usually I'm like, usually I like to chat with people, but I tell her that, you know, I might be pretty quiet. So, um, because, you know, I have some homework to do and I haven't ate the whole day. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope you understand that. And she goes like, oh, sure, I understand. So it's fine. And she asked me a question like, what are you doing? Like, what homework do you have to do at home? And I tell her that, you know, um, I am, I'm working to a degree of computer science and that's actually what I'm, what I want to do, uh, what I want to do back home. And she goes, okay, um, so you are working for, you want to become a software engineer? I say, yes, I would like to, I would love to become a software engineer. And she told me that that's good because like my, husband worked for Microsoft and he works for um, a team called the TNT program. Basically, they, they work with another company called Cyber Mobile. I don't know if you're familiar with that company. I am not. Yeah. So they were working with Cyber Mobile and um, she told me that, you know, it'll be cool if you can, you know, apply for that, um, for that internship because like, they have an internship going, um, coming up soon, you can apply there and, you know, it's more about for diversity, it's a diverse program and, you know, no matter what background you are coming, you, you are, you, you are coming from, um, it'll be cool for you to, you know, just check it out. You yeah. never, and I was like, wow, okay, sure. I would love to, le to learn more about it. And she said, you know what, since we are driving, because I was driving from her house to um, her, to her, to her work, we're going to her work. It was about 30 minutes away from, you know, from her house. 
So she told me, well, since we are driving, let me call my husband and ask, you know, like someone ah. from I became so excited because I was like, oh, wow, thank you very much. Like, you know, <laughs> that's incredible because I was about to clock out and I met this wonderful woman and she's willing to help me. And you almost didn't accept that right yeah. request. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost. So, um, so she was like, okay. And she called her husband. Her husband told her that, yeah, today is the last day. And oh was, my gosh. Yeah, and it was already 3 p.m. The like, you know, the end, like the last day, and it was gonna, it's gonna end at 5 p.m. Mm. So, I only had two hours left to apply there. Uh -huh. And like I was like, okay, you know what? That's the best opportunity, and I'll never gonna let that go. So, I that's have... the program you're in right now, the internship program. Yeah. When, when yeah. was this? When did you start? So I started in June. Like it started. Okay. It started about uh, like um, yeah, in June at, at the beginning of June. So is, and there is it's right now the end of August. So is there an end date to the internship? Is it is it well, ongoing or does it stop at the end of the summer or something? Yeah, it'll, it'll stop at the end of the summer. It will okay. stop at the end of the summer. So um, I applied there, and you know, um, long story short, I got it. I got an internship, right. and I started my internship there. And you know, when I was going through the internship, um, I had like um, a very. It was like a very interesting. Um, it was a very interesting journey because. Um, I learned so much thing that I thought I knew and I met a lot of people also there, you know, it was and I also discovered during that internship, I also discovered like, you know, the program management role and I honestly, because like, you know, I've heard, I was like, you know, driving for Lyft, you heard about people saying program manager, but you don't understand, like, I mean, like, I kind of, I couldn't understand that too, but, you know, through that internship, I learned about program management and, you know, I really fall in love, um, fall in love with that role. And, you know, I kind of see myself working as a program manager in the future. So, uh, because, you know, they care, like, they care a lot about solving um, customer, like, you know, customer problems and, you know, and they care, they also care about people. But, you know, David, don't get me wrong. I also, I also like to code. Right. And, but I realized, like, you know, that aspect of working directly with people and um, that aspect of working directly with people and understanding their problem helped me, you know, and helping so solve their problem. It's something that I want to do in my life. Yeah, I think Microsoft is a good place for that uh, where you can uh, have a career where you're in management and you're dealing with people and you're learning about the business, but you're also tactical and you yeah. can actually advance really well. Uh, a lot of other companies, uh, they expect you to kind of put the tactical stuff aside and become either a manager or a salesperson if you want to advance within the company. Yeah. And Microsoft yeah. is good at allowing you to keep technical while still advancing. Yeah, that's actually what I've noticed. That's actually what I found out um, at Microsoft. And I was very, um, I was very amazed about that, that, you know, you can actually do what you like and still, you know, and still have fun, I guess I would say that way. You know, like I like to code, but I like to also have fun of um, helping other people. So all those two things putting together, you know, right. and Microsoft allow you to do that. So that's an, that's an amazing success story. What um, what's next when you finish this internship? Are you going to go to work full time for Microsoft? Or are you going to finish your degree or what's what's next so, on your agenda? So like what's next my agenda? Like, you know, I'm still on uh, what's next is that um, as of right now, I got I got I got accepted at UW. Um, oh, congratulations! Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, I got accepted at UW, and I wanted to go to um, you know to continue my school there, my education there. But unfortunately, due to some finance issue that I'm having right now, I wasn't able to. I don't I don't know if I'll I'll be able to to go there. Um, I try to you know I try to borrow money from you know like take a loan but um due to my status because like i said earlier i was international student so mm -hmm. uh they were not they, they were not able to offer me some loan mm -hmm. but you know i know for sure it's not the end of my story so what i did 
if you know I contact a few of my instructor and tell them about you know what was going on and one of my instructor um, um, introduced me to a bootcamp called Code Fellows. Code Fellows. So basically on Code Fellows, I apply there and I just received um, um, a full ride scholarship okay, for the Code Fellows. Thank you very much. So um, I got my school for ride scholarship and I'm planning to completing this program and you know, before this before the end of my internship and try to you know find a find a job where I can you know work there and save some money to go back to school. Uh, yeah, and hopefully um, a lot of companies will help with tuition. That's that's not uncommon. Yeah, and I'm I mean, like you know like I say I I have a hope I have a hope that you know <laughs> I will I will find that company those companies. Uh, I believe you will. Uh, we're just about at time. What's uh, tell me um, other people when they find themselves in a situation where they're either homeless or struggling to find their path. What what kind of advice can you give to them? So um, one advice that I can give them is that you know um, I still you know I still believe and I'm convinced that you know you can succeed in you know in a in, a, in like you know in life no matter what your circumstance. Uh, and that you can actually just have a hope and keep going. It's gonna be. It might be hard, but for sure, if you you know if you know what you want, even if you don't exactly know what you want, but if you have like hope in you in your personal, and you know, I'm pretty sure you can succeed. And no matter the, what the difficulty can be. So yeah, that is pretty much the advice that I wanted to give them. Those are some good words, and I have no doubt that you will succeed as well. Uh, this is a great story. Thank you for sharing with us. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me, David. I appreciate it. All right. You stay safe. Thank you. You do the same. Technology is your friend as long as you know how to use them.